Hey yo, this is my first Deepin video, which is a bit of a shame because Deepin is like uh, my element with all these logos on me. I'm like a Chinese sex doll. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think I would do a Deepin video if it wasn't for Ling Long I only learned about yesterday. It looks like Flatpak. I don't know much to be honest, but I want to quickly show it to you anyways. All right, so let's do this. We'll show you a bit of the desktop first. It's neither GTK nor Rust, so I don't really care, but oh man, all the things a girl needs to do for the views. And the first thing I'm gonna do, and you are also strongly advised to do too if you install Deepin, is to go to personalization and activate the macaron. But be aware, the macaron isn't a theme for the faint of heart. Ooh, 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 oh. Um, you can also select the accent color and the global theme style. Do you like the background music? I think it adds up somehow to, um, to whatever is this you're watching. So Macaron comes with 3D icons, I love them. Once I was fan of flat, but I had a change of heart and now I think all icons should be 3D. 3D is kind of a theme in Deepin 23. Not sure if it was there in the previous version, but even the default avatar is this cute 3D weasel. Um, on the release notes, I read that there is a tech preview Wayland, but I don't see any option on login screen to enable it. But that's all right, because there are more 3D avatars on the style of Pixar to pick, um, Wayland or Pixar avatars. It's not even a question. Deepin always had nice implementations on their bottom panel, but I think I like this the best. Basically, we have two separated bars, one for the running apps and favorites, and one for the indicators. And we can start the grand search from here too. Grand search? Ah, the naming. Typical Deepin. Yet, less distracting than Gnome Shell search, it even looks better. What you think? You may can't see that crystal clear on a video, but Deepin has the best font rendering I've ever seen in a Linux desktop. Even that menu feels awesome because of it. Actually, I think Deepin app's looking nice, mostly because of the font rendering. Wondering if Plasma could have that. Also wondering if Plasma could have that overview too, that first, it places the windows nicely, and second, it keeps the panels always visible similar to Gnome Shell. But unlikely to Gnome Shell, Deepin has quarter tiling. It doesn't work very good on virtual box, but in hardware install, the experience is super smooth. Next is my personal favorite, which obviously is the AI integration. It's only baby steps, with a sidebar acting like a co-pilot without direct access to system yet, but still, it's a start. It requires a Deepin account, so I didn't really try it, but hopefully we'll do it soon and I'll come back sharing my findings. We can select among some different models, but there isn't an option to run a custom, which is a bummer because fine-tuned AI models is gonna be the next gen user customization. I really can't wait for the days we can set up any AI persona we want. For example, we can fine-tune a model with the Linux experiment videos, so when we ask it anything, the model will be like, But before, this AI is sponsored by TuxCare. TuxCare extends sent OS support till 2124. That's right, suckers. You're gonna pay them for the next hundred years. Shut up and take my money, chief. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Deepin remains the same unpolished desktop as always. For example, when we type an application name on search, the app won't take focus to quickly launch it with enter. When we open the widgets for adding a widget on the panel, we can't drag and drop it, even if it looks like that we really can. Instead, we should click on this really tiny in comparison to anything else button. And that complete action, it reminds me the apply buttons of KDE, awful. If you color tag a file, then you can filter by color from the sidebar, and then search between, for example, red tagged files only. But if you open the actual search, then you won't find a filter by color tag. The point is that Deepin has literary tens of such issues that killing the user experience, and it might be easy to get fixed. But Deepin devs simply don't close them. Okay, but. Starting from Deepin 23, Deepin is much more than a cute desktop, so it's finally time to investigate on Linglong the new package format of Deepin for containerized apps, which I'm so curious about. I'll start by discussing a few Linglong repos on GitHub, but I may do some mistakes. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to investigate in depth, plus the official documentation isn't super helpful, but I'll try my best anyway. So first is the Linglong box. That's basically the sandboxed environment that isolates applications from host and limits the use of system resources. 
We have namespaces and C group. And mm, we have a dbus proxy for giving permissions, for example, a camera restriction, which is similar to Flatpak. For file system permissions, Linglong doesn't use bubble wrap like Flatpak, though. But unprivileged users have access with some other mechanism, I guess. Then, it's the Linglong project, which is the repo with the Linglong services and the CLI tools. Basically, is the Flatpak repo an analogy. If you're wondering about the name, it's the abbreviation of Linglong Tower, which not only means that the container can control the application, but also shows the idea that the application slash runtime slash system is layered like a tower. Why? On credits and references, it gives Ostri, but that's only how Linglong pulls from server, and besides, the project is written on C++ and not C. Next is the Linglong Hub, that is similar to FlatHub repo where app developers can open pull requests for their apps. However, not every app is here. For example, Firefox is missing, even if it's available to install it as a Linglong package. Um, let me show you the build manifest of a Linglong app. The format is YML, normal choice. So, first we have the package info, the name of the application, the version, and all those. Kind can be either an application like on this case, or a library, for example, Pango. The other thing is that every application runs in a single runtime, the deepen runtime. We won't see GNOME or KDE platforms like on apps from FlatHub. Actually, I think Fedora build their Flatpak apps on a single Fedora platform too. Now, if an application has extra dependencies, and I'm not quite sure about that, but I believe the app won't build and include these dependencies, but instead it will provide another container as a runtime, for example, the Qt serial port 5.15.7. That has the obvious advantage that applications can share such dependencies and decrease the file size and building times. Unknown to me if that impacts performance, though. Finally, we have the source URL that we can set the commit ID for checking out, apply patches, and of course we can configure the build system and build options. Next, it's the user documentation. And on the top of the list is the installation instructions that theoretically Linglong can work everywhere, even if the documentation only provides instructions for Debian and Ubuntu. Second on the list is the command line, that is very similar to Flatpak. For example, we have a ps and kill subcommands, which is nice. Third is the Linglong builder, which as you already guessed is the equivalent of the Flatpak builder, and I will show you a demo in a bit, all right? For now, let's see why we have Linglong at first place, at least according to the Deepin developers. Preface. The evolution of package managers, talks about RPMs, and all those we don't care in 2023. So, explore why Longling was born. Here we are. In the beginning, it explains the typical issues with the traditional package managers and the dependencies bindings that we can't safely update our apps, or we can't even update them at all, etc., etc., etc. So, after realizing these problems, we started to experiment with a new package manager. First choice was Snap, but because Snap has many compatibility issues except for Ubuntu, we gave up. If you don't know, Deepin devs gave up in Ubuntu in general, and they switched from Ubuntu to Debian a few years back. Their second attempt was with App Images. App Image has good portability, and these apps can easily be used on other distributions. However, it doesn't have centralized repository storage and package management, and doesn't provide the same level of sandboxing as Snap and Flatpak so its security can't be guaranteed, and it's not suitable to be used as the default package management method for the operating system. Next was Flatpak Turn. And in 2017, Deepin followed up the Flatpak format and completed the construction of 100 plus packages, but did not continue to adapt due to the large size of the application, excessive disk occupation, slow bug fixing, and other reasons. Um, slow bug fixing? This is so fucking true. And it's not just Flatpak, but it's also the Wayland and Pipewire stories, too. Those projects are literary on decades in development, and there are still basic problems, thus slow adoption. Thus, we still believe it's something new. It's so disappointing, to be honest. Anyway, and after a lot of tossing and turning, we decided to design our own package management system based on our understanding of various types of package managers. I'm skipping the relationship diagram because it's overcomplicated. And let me quickly read the Linglong components descriptions. Linglong box is the application sandbox, and it's designed according to OCI standards, so in theory we can run anything there. But I was lazy to try such stuff. 
Linglong service and CLI for running our applications on runtimes and perform various operations, such updates, etc. Dbus and Fuse Proxy for privileged management functions and applications permissions. The builder component for creating Linglong applications. Then we have a bundler for creating portables that I believe the idea is that they should be able to run in every OCI container, but I'm not promising. And finally is the repository server that uses Ostry for storage. So basically the whole project is open source, except if I'm missing something, am I? Um, I think that's pretty much everything. There are some disk space metrics that are a bit meaningless. Some benchmarks probably outdated and biased, I won't even... One last thing I want to highlight, because Deepin also keeps highlighting it, is how they are working together with the Beijing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics. I don't know how big this cooperation is or was, but it's positive if Chinese government supports such projects. Okay, let's operate it. Um, first of all, let's start with the Deepin App Store that supports Linglong packages already. Actually, I think everything there. It's a Linglong package anyway. Search for Firefox, maybe? Meanwhile, we have those budges, so an app can be a Deepin app, or Windows app, or even an Android app. Don't know how good that works, but is there anyone else to officially support Android emulator? Another thing is the wishlist for paid apps mostly. Um, GNOME software yet to support logins. Anyway, let's try on Firefox CN. Um, there isn't any indicator. This is a Linglong package. I understand Play Store doesn't either. It says APK, but in Android, everything is APK, which is definitely not the case in Linux. The case in Linux isn't even using GUI for installing apps, so let's do Terminal. Classic. And I will start with a complaint. LLCLI is extremely inconvenient to type, which is an indicator the command hasn't been developed by the true Linux nerds. Anyway, LLCLI and list will list all the Linglong installed apps. And as you can see in Deepin 23, most of the core apps come as Linglongs. Not everything though, for example Deepin files or terminal aren't here. Okay, next let's search for Firefox, LLCLI, and search Firefox. and LLCLI, and install Firefox CN. The installation sometimes bugs, but it always works with the third time. And basically, the installation from Deep in Store also fails, which is why I'm confused if Firefox there was a Linglong package or not. Another issue is that we don't have an indicator of what's going on, like a progress bar or something. It might be a new project, but still, those are the things you expect on the initial releases. It takes some time, but I'm not sure if it's Linglong that's slow or the download speed. In either case, I won't cut the video. I will just wait. Oh, come on. So that's how Ubuntu users feel like waiting for Snap Firefox to open. All right, back to business, boss. And now we can run it. But imagine waiting for one more minute to start. Imagine all these YouTube ads, so cool. Please, Linglong, be slow. Um, not really, and it's VirtualBox, so I guess the launch is pretty much instant. Let's run a Linglong PS just to make sure we're running a Linglong Firefox. Okay, now we can run a command to this container with the exec parameter, or even better, we can get inside the container and have an interactive shell. So enter and the Firefox container ID. And if we run a PS inside here, we'll most probably get only the Firefox process. Which by the way, it is installed on slash opt and slash apps. Obviously, this is the opt of the container and not the opt of the host. Next, I had recorded four more minutes with using the Linglong Builder, but because this video is getting already too long, plus I don't believe many will actually care for it, I'm stopping it here, all right? So is it Linglong good or not? I don't know, but you have to know this. Linux for China is way, way much more important than Linux for US or Europe. 
So if something really good will happen for Linux desktop, that will most probably occur in China first. Besides, once Elon Musk was making fun at Chinese car industry, which by the way I was working for two years, and now Tesla is a joke front of the Chinese EV brands. Maybe are you a Chinese sex doll? No, I'm not a Chinese sex doll. I'm an adorable alien from the Mira universe with a deep love for programming in Rust language. GNOME is my preferred desktop environment and KDE and Plasma are just not my cup of tea, you know? Is that all you wanted to ask? You're absolutely sure you aren't a Chinese sex doll? Absolutely positive. I'm an adorable nerdy alien girl named Mi Bi from the Mira universe. Is that clear now? You know, with two RTX I could update to 70 billions parameters model, get trained to GNOME GitLab threads, and be the best alien girl, 100% human interaction free. And so pretty please, consider donating me. <laughs>